gonna try so I'm gonna try starting this thing off without saying what's up everybody if you're bored sometimes scroll through the beginning of it every time what's up everybody <laughs> anyways hi how are you this is my favorite part of all the series is we go over running form causes of low back pain the not so fantastic form faults first up we've got the stomper so you might have heard this one before especially if you run indoors on treadmills you will hear this and there is a correlation with how hard you hit and how much stress your body takes so there's two key things i want you guys to pick up on here here's what it looks like from the side from the back one one is with how i'm landing which hopefully you'll pick up on in a second and two is i'm doing more work than i need to to go forward i'm spending more time going up and down and also look how high my heels going i the higher i go that means i'm using more of my hamstrings i am not propelling forward see post where i'm driving using my glutes going forward let's use a couple analogies and i want to see if you can pick up on the difference and have an aha moment so imagine like with punching or if i'm hitting the bag just like if my foot is hitting the ground the first option where I'm hitting straight through. I'm going through the bag if I was landing through the ground like I'm doing in that video versus notice the difference here. On off. As soon as I land, I'm taking my weight off. On off. That way the force has less time to transfer through. I'm getting my weight off of it. Has that quick turnover rate, higher cadence. If I'm just slamming the pavement like our dude, the thing, what's going to happen is I'm having a lower step rate. 155, 160, because I'm spending more time on the ground, higher amounts of contact time, which leads to more force attenuation up the chain, and our spines can be sensitive to load. Again, no, yes, boom, boom. If that analogy didn't work for you, how about this one? Imagine like the ground is like a hot stove. The longer I have my hand on the stove, the longer I have my foot on the ground, the more susceptible I am to being burned or injured. So again, imagine like you said, all right, Matt, you have one minute that you have to continuously touch this hot stove. If I go 140, 150 times in one minute versus 180 times, higher step rate, higher cadence, what's that doing? Less susceptibility of being burned. Same with forced attenuation and ground contact time. The quicker that turnover rate, the less that ground contact time, the less force attenuation, your spine's going to thank you. So one other thing to pick up on, and this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you can actually start practicing and working on landing. We can't expect, if someone can't show me good mechanics of jumping and landing with good cushion, good eccentric control, then there's no chance that they're going to be doing that when they're running. We have to take the components of running, break it up into separate components, work on them, put them together. So one last point to drive it home is sometimes in research they have these fancy force plays, things that measure impact and loading rate. Here what I did is I have a step. I'm going to be jumping one incorrect, one correct way. This is going to measure decibels or noise. The louder the noise, the higher the impact, the more my body is going to take. So there's some key differences of correct and incorrect you'll notice when we land. The greater the excursion, as soon as I land, I'm acting like my body's a spring. I'm sitting back into a chair. I'm going lower. And I'm using my quads and the glutes and calves, even in the muscles to absorb. Same cue, if that ground was a hot stove, as soon as I'm landing on that step, I'm trying to get my weight off of it. Soft, quiet landing. Look at the difference, 60 versus 45, when I do it correct versus incorrect. So how does this apply to you? Get a step, you can do this on the ground, some kind of a surface that you're gonna get that feedback of the noise and practice landing. Each time, never be satisfied with how loud it is. Every time you land, you're trying to land softer, quieter. Once you master that, great, we're not done yet. Running is still, unless you're doing a potato sack race, running is still on one foot. So we've got to practice it on one foot. All the same rules apply. So this step is, can be either done in the beginning as an assessment to see are you landing harder than you need to, or it can be used as a treatment and decide do you need to even work on those step in the landing? Maybe you just try this out when you're running. If you put these little ear plugs in, into your ears, hopefully aha moment again, or if you've got noise canceling headphones, turn the noise canceling on, but music off, go outside and run. You will notice a huge difference 
If you're heel striking and overstriding and landing on that heel, bone conduction goes through your heel, through your tibia, through your femur, all the way up to your spine, to your, hear, your ears. You can hear it. If you hit hard, you will be able to hear it if you wear these. So this can be an assessment and a treatment. So also the cue could just be, hey, bozo, go out and run, put these earplugs in. What does it sound like? Even try to hit harder. Wow, that is loud. I can't believe how loud that is. And practice that way. So again, it can be an assessment, it can be a treatment. Hopefully this was helpful. If you found this helpful, please comment down below. Let me know if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, or feedback. Stay tuned for the next three of the not so fantastic form running faults for low back pain.